Ahoy, I'm Jen, and this is Dream Prague, the channel where I give you a foreigner's take on life in Prague, Czechia. If you're new to my channel, I'm a native Californian who's been living in Prague for the past nine years, and I've adjusted pretty well to Czech life, but that doesn't stop me from bringing home suitcases of American crap every time I go back to the States. These are mostly chemically laden foodstuffs that are illegal in the EU. Delicious. One time Hansa brought back for me a backpack full of Kraft Parmesan cheese, which is not really cheese. And he got stomped at customs with just like a sack of basically white powder in his backpack, but he still managed to get through. But Americans don't only sneak in the artificial cheese products. We also smuggle drugs. That, that didn't come out right. What I mean is that Americans grew up on handfuls of brightly colored capsules of drugs that we legally purchased in American drugstores. And when you're living abroad and you get sick, there's nothing like those brightly colored capsules to make you feel your mother's love. Czechs, on the other hand, have a totally different medicinal tradition, and they believe that any ailment can be cured with the right combination of herbs and produce and alcohol and time off of work. We Americans don't take time off of work, hence the need for the pills. I started to do research on these Czech uh, home remedies and I thought, wait a minute, I have a lot of Czechs in my audience who love to give me advice, whether I ask for it or not. No, seriously, have you seen my comment section? So today, Americans, get your hands out of the candy jar, the medicine cabinet, because we're gonna learn how Czech grandmothers have kept their families alive and well for generations. We'll start with the common cold. When we lived in the United States, we would never call in sick to work for a common cold. We would just go to our cubicles and sit there coughing and sneezing and moaning loudly so that our coworkers knew what they had to look forward to in a few days. Czech doctors will actually write you a note so you can stay home from work and nurse your cold, which seems pretty reasonable. On top of plenty of good rest, the Czech grandmother, or babička, will recommend something wholesome, if not a little bit difficult to come by. Medvedi mleko, or bear's milk, was something that was recommended for men when they got sick, hence the manly name. And since Slovakia apparently inherited the bear population of Czechoslovakia during the Velvet Divorce, Czech grandmothers had to find ingredients for bear milk in their own kitchen. Petr shared his family recipe with us. One cup of hot milk, cow's milk will do, one to two tablespoons of honey, one shot of rum, or tuzemak, which is a Czech variety of rum, and you can learn all about it in a video that I recently did about Czech drinks. Interestingly, I feel like there's a lot of overlap between the Czech alcohol and the Czech remedies, but you be the judge. That actually sounds delicious which makes up for the absolute grossness of Babichka's most popular cold remedy, which is to cut an onion and put it in a jar between layers of sugar or honey. Let that sit for several hours and then drink the residual syrup. Everyone I asked said that this totally works, even if it is pretty disgusting. Except for Sarah, who said that now that she's older, she actually likes the taste and just eats the onion along with it. If you don't have honey, you can use sugar, but Czechs really swear by the healing power of honey. Apparently, if you have allergies from a certain region, at the beginning of the allergy season, you can eat honey from that region and it sort of uh, inoculates you against the pollen in that area. If you've lost your voice, drink some warm Vincentka, which is water, half and half with milk. So a word about water. Czechs place a very great importance on the health properties of water. Way more than Americans can really understand. We think of water as just something coming out of your tap 
And if there's any sort of special qualities to a particular water, it's that the water in New York makes really great bagels. We mostly think that bottled water is for suckers and just another way for Coca-Cola or PepsiCo to take more of our money. The Czechs strongly believe in the healing properties of certain mineral waters, and they have very famous spa towns like Karlovy Vary, Marianské Lázně, and doctors prescribe trips to these regions to, to bathe in this very healthy water. Vincentka comes from Luhačovice, which is a spa town, and doctors prescribe this water to dissolve phlegm. You can run it through, through your nasal cavity. They say it helps to treat diabetes, liver problems, the list is endless. There's too much to get into about Czech water in this video, but if you want to learn more about the properties of Vincentka, I'll leave a link to their website below and you can learn more than you ever wanted to know about water. When Kuba used to get a cough, his granny would rub his chest with dog lard. I'm sorry, what? Convinced this was a typo, I searched the internet for dog lard or psit sadlo, and it turns out it's a thing. The remedy was invented by a Swiss healer who shall remain nameless out of pure shame. The Czechs would rather use the lard of their next door neighbor than of a dog. Fortunately for our four-legged friends, Psi Sadlo no longer comes from dogs and it's really just beeswax with herbs and it helps to loosen up the phlegm. One of my Czech teachers swears that they used to use real dog lard in the Czech Republic, but I refuse to believe it. The Czech Babichka also swears by tea and uses the herbs found in this region. Um, if they're going to sweeten it, they use honey and they make sure that the temperature is not hot enough to destroy the antibacterial properties of the honey. The minute I complain of any health problems, my Czech students always prescribe me hot tea made with ginger, lemon, honey, and a shot of tuzemak for good measure. To treat a fever as a Czech babichka would, you're going to need a scarf, one you don't plan on ever wearing again. You can also use a cheesecloth. Several grannies recommend chopping up an onion and folding it in this fabric and wrapping it around your neck. For a fever of over 39 degrees Celsius, Hey Siri, what's that in Fahrenheit? 102.2 degrees Fahrenheit. For that high of a fever, you can put tavaro into the cheese wrap and wrap it around your feet. Tavaro is, it, it, they say it's quark, which Americans don't really know. It's like, it's like cottage cheese and it comes in different like, like hardnesses, softnesses. Um, but Tavaro seems to be one of the granny's staple remedies. They use it to treat a sunburn. That actually sounds pretty nice. Um, you can also put it on your breasts if you have pain from breastfeeding. I love cheese as much as the next person, but I don't know. You can also replace the cheese with lard, presumably not from a dog. And then on top of this wet layer, you would put plastic and then a dry layer. This is what they call a Pris-Nitz compress. So wet layer, plastic, then dry layer. And this can be anywhere you need to get rid of inflammation. Clara's granny put the onions directly into her socks and then slept with them overnight and the onions presumably just suck the fever right out of her. In case your socks weren't stinky enough, you can also soak them in vinegar and put them on your feet and then you put dry socks over that. For intestinal problems or vomiting, the Czech grandmother recommends rum. That seems like a self-licking ice cream cone. But the most commonly cited cure for stomach problems was Becherovka, which I also talked about in the drink video. And this is a, a liqueur that was made specifically for stomach problems. It tastes like a spicy shot of Christmas. It's quite good. Toothaches can be some of the worst types of pain, and the Czech Babichka recommends chewing on a clove. Okay. I cracked a tooth once, and the only thing that kept me from passing out from the pain was a decent dose of hydrocodone, which is basically like the cause for all America's addiction problems. But I just don't know if a clove would have cut it. Other viewers let me in on a Czech secret ingredient called Alpa Francovka, 
which can be used to cure anything from a sore throat, if you gargle it diluted, to a toothache, to acne, to disinfecting surfaces. Speaking of multi-purpose liquids, Slivovitsa or plum brandy tops Babichka's list of the most helpful miracle cures to cure anything from an ear infection to an upset stomach to a sore throat. If you have a sore throat, Patrick's granny recommends soaking your scarf or cheesecloth in Slivovitsa and wrapping it around your throat, which is kind of strange. You'd think that the Slivovitsa would go in the throat, but who am I to argue with a Moravian babichka? Actually, this could be my translation problem because the Czech word for neck is krk, krk, krk. No vowels, krk. And the uh, word for throat, they, they say like vkrku, like in, in the neck. So I'm not sure if the pain was on the outside of the neck or it was in the throat, but if anything can do double duty, it's Slubovica. True story, I was once helping a Slovak friend clean some uh, graffiti off of a storefront, and I asked what the liquid I was using was, and he said, Slivovica, jasne. Garlic is like the food version of Slivovica. It can be used to cure all sorts of ailments, from an earache, to getting rid of a wart, to making a very delicious soup called chesnečka, which tastes like a warm hug from granny on the inside. You make it by grating a ton of garlic and boiling it with a bit of potatoes and a parsnip and some parsley, maybe a carrot, and it's just kind of like a thin, delicious, um, fragrant soup. Just when things were getting tasty again, somebody recommended garlic milk. You heard that right. That's warm milk, a spoonful of butter, a spoonful of honey, and two mashed garlic cloves. Nope. Last but not least, we have the inevitable Czech ailment of having a monkey, which is a euphemism for a hangover. Czechs seem to be masters of conquering the hangover for obvious reasons. I mean, if you can't conquer your hangover, you can't make it to the pub. Chesnečka, the garlic soup, works wonders for a hangover. Others recommend vivar, or a strong broth that can be made from a whole hen or from beef. Maria's babichka recommends mixing baking soda and vinegar in a cup, and as soon as it starts to rustle, she says, you down it. Now, every child in America has done the volcano experiment, and this just seems like the opposite of what your stomach needs when you have a hangover. Maybe the volcanic effect is what they were after. The most creative way to treat a hangover, which I have yet to try, is to drink the juice of a jar of Granny's pickles. Czech pickles are a little different from American pickles. They're somewhere between a dill and a sweet pickle. Um, you should definitely try one when you come to visit. The Czech grandmother's best cure for a hangover is practice the world over, and that is a vyprošťovák, which was a new word for me. Vyprošťovák, which translates loosely to hair of the dog. In other words, a frosty can of Pilsner. So I don't know about you, but I learned a ton from these Czech and Moravian grandmothers. So next time you're feeling under the weather, Instead of rushing out to your American drugstore, stock up on some onions and cottage cheese and let hundreds of years of Babichka's wisdom cure you. I'll leave the links below to some of the products I talked about. Um, I don't know if they sell them in the United States, but you can always smuggle them home after your next trip to the Czech Republic. Tak, na zdravi, ahoy!